continue any thoughts are you enjoying so far is there anything new that you have learned yes ma'am yes yes so kiran what uh, so far what has touched you okay kiran can't hear you in case you are responding to what i said you're on mute okay not sure if she's saying anything uh can anyone else have you anything that has particularly ministered to you okay kiran says all that's good others we are called to fellowship with jesus and and uh, fellowship with the believers that is why we call brother many mm -hmm. of time mm -hmm. the brother and sister term come become like uh, mm -hmm. as we indian we call the elders uncle auntie like that become in christian around but literally mean we are brothers and mm -hmm. sisters jesus mm -hmm. so the fellowship god has called us yes, to yes. son and the fellow believers that thing is really touched me yes yes true true So fellowship with them, fellowship with others, whatever their age may be. Mm. Praise God, that's good, that's good. And uh, Prince is adding here, spiritual walk with God is a journey. Very true. Yes, it's a journey. The Holy Spirit is with us, teaching us everything. Manu's uh, Manu's comment there. Uh, so yeah, I mean it's a very beautiful uh, book where John is sharing. practical thoughts about living the christian life you know we claim so many things that i am a believer and i am a christian but john is saying look if you are a believer then your life must have like your life must have all these things you must be continually living out of the life of god flowing from your fellowship with the uh, godhead and you should have good fellowship with other believers right uh, and uh, be strong don't let the world uh, deceive you don't let any wrong teachers uh, false teachers deceive you you can continue to have a very very stable life because the holy spirit lives on the inside of you so uh, this is about practically living out you know that that life uh, in god when we claim that we are believers you know and the righteousness of god in christ jesus but you live it out you live it out and he says it's only when you live it out when you are living away from sin that you are truly uh, uh, living your life as a uh, you know you, if you want to put it as a true believer okay right so uh, yes let's proceed from here we uh, were at the end of chapter 2 and at the end of chapter 2 2 once again he begins addressing the the believers and he says little children abide in him okay so the love of god is a theme uh, in the book of john but abide 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 in him that can also be a theme so how can i continue to live with god we have to determine to uh walk in what john is reminding us right walk like jesus just as he walked we also have to walk here on the earth so when we do that we get abide in him that's what god wants you know god doesn't want us to visit and then be gone but he wants us to continually be connected to him so he says abide in him when you abide in him what happens he says that we will have a confidence and we will not be ashamed at his coming so which means to say that we would have lived out we would have have had lived out our life righteously and uh, uh, you know whenever we uh, think of school and the uh, submissions teachers would come and say okay have you completed your uh, assignment uh, there's that fear if we haven't done it okay 
if you haven't done it right if you haven't studied uh, and you've just done something in a rush we're not confident at the time of submission but when we have done the work we have studied we've done our part now we may not get 100 on 100 but we still have that confidence that oh wow you know uh, i've done my part and when math comes and she takes the assignment from me i'm going to be okay so it's a similar feeling you you lived your life abiding in the lord uh, and you carry that confidence when he returns there's really nothing that i want to hide from him uh, i have lived transparently before the lord acknowledging my sin correcting myself for the things that the holy spirit has convicted me of and i stand confident you know uh, for his second coming and uh, he says that uh, you know john continues to now encourage the believer to live out that life of righteousness so in verse 29 he says if you know that he is righteous you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him so we have to follow after the very nature of god so what is one of the pursuits that a believer must have to become like christ you know uh, romans 8:29 it says that we uh, this the goal is to be conformed into the image of the lord jesus christ so who is god god is love we must be love god is righteous we must be righteous so god is just we must be just god is uh, compassionate we must be compassionate so everything that god is we want to be conformed into that image and in this passage you know, john says uh, righteousness you know that he is righteous so why don't you walk righteously and you demonstrate that life of righteousness so uh, he is encouraging us to practically live out the christian life and demonstrate the walk or the journey some of you mentioned uh, journey with god the right kind of journey with god the way jesus lived here on earth so now moving on to chapter 3 chapter 3 again has beautiful themes running through it and it begins with this marvelous verse okay uh, uh, just on the basis of this one verse uh, i'm sure we can just re, uh, bring up some of the hints that we know right the love of god uh, you know how great god's love is uh, that you know if if the scribes would uh, run out of if the ocean where the ink the scribes would run out uh, of it to write to describe the love of god There's so many different hints that we can think of because the greatness of god's love for us so verse 1 of 1 john 3 he said behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of god you know it's a statement of wonder where you're thinking wow what is this love that god has given to us that after redeeming us instead of just calling us the redeemed instead of just calling us set free you know instead of just calling us uh you know mankind restored by the work of jesus christ he could have given us many names he could have just said oh the faithful ones of the lord or my creation so many terms but what did god choose to make us sons and daughters you know sons and daughters it's a position of benefit it's a position of privilege it's a position of um uh, you know just experiencing the bounty of god's love so think about the greatness and the goodness of god for mankind for a believer who has accepted yes for the world jesus has paid the price but it's of no use if we don't accept it and the ones who have accepted it you know we are the believers for the believers we are told that we have become the children of god what manner of love the father it, it's like saying it's mind boggling i can't even describe i can't understand i can't wrap my mind around it what manner of love the father has bestowed bestowed is put on us right that we should be called the children of god okay uh, and uh, you know we we do understand from scripture that the kind of love that god gives us 
is the same kind of love which he gave to his son. You remember the time when Jesus, uh, he was being baptized by John and then uh, he hears a voice from heaven. He said, this is my beloved son. Right? This is my beloved son. And it's that kind of love, the same love, because Jesus said that, the same love that the father gave him, he has given us. Where each one of us, we are called the beloved of the Lord. And John understands it. You see, uh, in the life of John, uh, he must have come through a journey to understand this love that God had for him. Because remember I told you, John, along with his brother, they were called as sons of thunder. You know, they were ready to uh, just launch out uh, in their anger. So anger, they were known for anger. They were known for, uh, 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 you know, strife and fighting and things like that. But this John, you imagine what transformation he has gone through in his life to talk about love. Okay. Uh, and that's why you know, he's saying, oh, my mind is just uh, not able to get this. What manner of love? It's statement of wonder. What manner the love, uh, Father, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Okay. So what should we know through this privilege? Is it deserved? Not at all. Which is why it's even more mind-boggling. So all these things make us worship God more. Just makes us thank God and say, God, why would you choose to love me as a son and a daughter? But what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. And I think it's Ephesians 3, right, where we are told about the height, the depth, the width of the love of God. And Ephesians also says, like, you know, God, he, he has chosen us to show his kindness. Even in the generations to come, in the ages to come, uh, he wants to show his kindness to us. That is why he has chosen us in love, it says. So what is this love? We can't even understand, right? So many, uh, 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 so much literature is out there about this love of God, but we cannot capture it completely. But that is God's heart for us. You know, it's a, it's an amazing uh, love that continues to keep us in wonder. What love God has bestowed upon us that we should be called as the sons or the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it does not know Him. Okay, and because of this love that God has given us, we are in a relationship with God, and we have a commitment towards God. We have chosen a kind of life in God, uh, which we understand, but the world will not understand. Right? They might think, why do I want to uh, uh, walk such a narrow path? And why do you only want to walk a straight uh, road? It's okay. Like, you know, a lot of uh, quotes out there say that you live only once, live to the fullest. Um, if it makes you happy, it's okay. Well, that's the theme for the world out there. But we have a different theme. And that theme is to walk the way he walked. If you ask the question, why? 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. Right? When we know him like that, that he loves us like that, you know, we don't think it's a big deal to commit our lives to God and say, okay, God, I want to live for you because that's how you have loved me. Right? And I cannot even begin to understand it. Okay? Uh, so, we commit our lives to God. And uh, he says that we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Uh, so he's saying that, yes, we know uh, certain things right now, but there is much more to be revealed about God and about us when he appears. Now, uh, this is also where in 1 Corinthians 30, we know in part, therefore we prophesy in part. So in this world, our understanding of who God is, it is limited. But when all... When this life is done, we are told that we will, we will see him face to face, right? 
and we will know him for who he is. We will see him as he is. In fact, that's that's exactly what uh, the word says. So uh, about us, you know, all the things that God is going to do through us, and uh, what our life is going to be in the ages to come. There is greater revelation, right? And we await that revelation. We await the revelation of God Himself as well. And uh, we are told that God has loved us in this way. He's made us His children, and we are waiting uh, with expectation for the things that are going to be revealed about Him, the things that are going to be revealed about us, and it is a great hope that we carry. Right, so John is saying, just think about your life. It's a life of hope, not just in this world, but even in the life to come. There are things that we are uh, trusting God for, and when you live in this kind of hope, you know, John is saying, why don't you choose to purify yourself because He is pure. So the whole point of John is, look, God is like this. You also be like this. He is righteous. You be righteous. And because you have so much hope, he's saying God is pure. You be pure. Okay. And uh, when I think about this, you know, the invitations in God's word: Be holy as I am holy. Any invitation in God's word uh, is because we can do it. Right? God does not give us an invitation which we cannot accept. So if He says, "Be holy," I can be holy. Be pure. I can be pure. So every invitation in God's word is an invitation which we can fulfill. So we are invited to walk in that way. Okay. Uh, before I go further, uh, Kiran has a question. She say, uh, "Why God chose us? Why God chooses us? Okay. Why God chooses us? See, He has created us. Okay, and." Uh, he has loved us, right? Just by virtue of the fact that we we are a part of Him, He has created us, right, with love, and uh, that's the way in which He loves us. Even though uh, sin corrupted mankind, He made a way to redeem us and bring us back to Himself. So it's a choice, Kiran. It's a choice that God has made, uh, and. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's like asking the parent, "Why do you like? Why do you love your child?" I, any parents here? Can you answer that question? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I was a little confused, so. Oh, <laughs> thank okay, you. okay, sure, sure, sure. No problem. Yeah. Any parents, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. Simply, it came my mind. Oh, Suddenly, okay. it came. So yes. Yeah, no problem, Kiran. But it's like that, you know, when a parent loves you, there, there's no reason. It's hard to put it in words. They, they just love you. So it's like that. God has chosen to love us, and in this case, you know, God is. We know that He is self-existent. He is all-sufficient. So He does not need anything or anyone to fulfill Him. A human parent, yes, they might want the love of uh, a child to feel fulfilled, but actually God doesn't need it. But He has chosen to love us, so that's what the way John wrote. Uh, Behold, what manner of love! I feel like saying, "Hey, I can't understand this love, right?" So, yeah, God has just chosen to love us. It's amazing. Okay, moving forward. You would find John is going to overlap on the themes of chapter one. Now in chapter three, okay, he talked about the love of God, and then he's again going to move into righteousness and living a sin-free life. Now we also have to remember that uh, we, for the sake of convenience, have numbered the passages and we go in order. But when John was writing, Apostle John was writing it, it was. Uh, you know, it was a letter from his heart, so uh, he hasn't necessarily classified his thoughts into okay. I'm now going to talk about the love of God, then I'm going to talk about walking in righteousness, then I'm going to talk about something else. But 
since it's a letter, he's kind of going back on the same matters that he had already addressed. Okay, so we will touch upon that. So from verse four, he goes on and he says, "Look, whoever commits sin, uh, he also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness." And we know Scripture talks about Satan as the lawless one. And Jesus said, "I have not come to destroy uh, uh, the law, but I've come to uphold it." Okay, uh, but of course we we know that what he meant was that God, His righteousness, His holiness, uh, His purity was, um, you know, the the fact that we must keep the commandments, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, it was done through the work of. Jesus Christ. So we became a part of the new covenant. So we're not looking at law the way uh, it was uh, looked at in the old covenant. But by way of the work of Jesus and the empowering of the Holy Spirit, we are able to live that life in the new covenant. So uh, he's telling the believer, "Don't walk in sin." One thing for us to understand. Again, I told you, if there is an invitation in Scripture, it's because we can do it. And so much more in the new covenant because we have already been given the victory. So we are living from victory, right? So when he says, "Okay, believer, don't commit sin," it's possible for the believer not to commit sin. And then he goes on and he says, um, "We already have Jesus Christ, who was uh, manifested to take away our sin, and we understand that. We saw that earlier, right? He was the propitiation for our sin, or he was the prize. He was the ransom." For our sin, he has made the. Uh, I mean, he has atoned for our sin. So when you know so much, right? Why do you want to walk in sin? And uh, he continues to encourage the believer, and he says, "You practice righteousness." In verse seven, he says, "You practice righteousness because if you practice righteousness, you are righteous." Now we might look at the scripture, Second Corinthians five twenty one. That uh, he who knew no sin was made sin for us. That uh, you know we can be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's a positional truth. Now we have to live out the truth. And he's saying if you practice righteousness, meaning living it out. Now suppose a believer is not living it out. Is he still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Yes, positionally he is. But John is reiterating and he's saying. Let the life match the spiritual truth, okay? Of who we have become in Christ Jesus. That's when we have the fullness of that life. Otherwise, you you think about it. You know, there's a there is a disconnect. Positionally, yes, we are the righteousness, but in the things that we are doing, the life that we are practicing, we are so far away from the spiritual reality, and that shouldn't happen. Uh, a believer can enjoy fullness of life when. You are in sync with that spiritual reality. So he says, practice righteousness. Then you are truly righteous. Again, why is he asking us to practice righteousness? You would notice he says, just as he is righteous. So everything that we see in God, we have to live. He is pure. You be pure. He is righteous. You be righteous. So it's coming from the very nature of God. Why should I do it? Because He is. He is holy. You be holy. Okay. So that is the that is the desire of a believer. I want to be like God. Okay. In nature, because we want to reveal, right? We are the sons and daughters of of God, and Jesus came to reveal the Father, and we are here to reveal Jesus to the world. How will we reveal Jesus to the world? Through our nature, the life that we live for God. So John is saying that, come on, you be walk like He walked on the earth. You reveal Christ to the world because if you don't do that, you live a sinful life. Now He's coming on very strong. In fact, in verse eight, He's saying, if you sin, you're of the devil. Okay, that's very very strong. He is rebuking the believers and He's saying, look. You have to practice righteousness. I have to practice righteousness. So we cannot uh, go contrary to that. We who claim that we are of God, shouldn't we on, be on God's team? We should. 
right so in verse 8 he say think about jesus he was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil so if we claim that we are on the team of jesus we should also be destroying the works of the devil but if we are living in sin which is if we are practicing sin now again i'm not talking about a one off mistake that happens in our journey right? we all might stumble we all might unintentionally you know end up doing something wrong uh, sinful but when the holy spirit convicts us we respond to god and say god i'm sorry you know i i do not want to do this uh, i repent of it help me by the power of the holy spirit we renew our minds we change our ways that's okay but what john is referring to here is a pattern you know it's a it's a lifestyle of unrepented uh, uh, you know sinful uh, way of living and he says look that kind of a lifestyle if we are living that then it's it's as if you're of the devil right because he was since you're of the devil and uh, he says the lord jesus came to destroy the works of the devil so how can we who claim that we are part of the life of christ go with the devil right so it doesn't make sense it doesn't add up we are uh, in the opposite team and so we must be against the devil therefore we must be against sin we must get rid of all sin from our lives and never practice sin because if we really claim that we are born of god so in verse 9 he says whoever has been born of god does not sin and his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of god so we say look just by virtue of being born of god what is being born be born again right and second corinthians 5:17 we have become a new creation our spirit man has been made new all together Uh, and we have the capability uh, of renewing our minds and we've already been told in uh, uh, romans 6 uh, 14 that sin shall not have dominion over you right so when so much has happened uh, to make us victorious in our new birth into christ jesus how is it that a believer can walk in sin right how is it that a believer can walk in sin it would only be possible by choice right if we make up our minds and say okay i will i don't want to change then it's possible to live in sin but john is very strongly warning the believer and he say look anyone who sins you're practicing lawlessness you're of the devil so how can you being born uh, in christ uh, have sin and or practice sin so he's coming on very strongly now again is slowly moving on to the theme of loving okay, loving uh, god loving people and he says uh in this the children of god and the children of the devil are manifest whoever does not practice righteousness is not of god nor is he who does not love his brother again remember i told you initially he talked about walking in truth walking in the light uh having fellowship with god loving your brother again he's coming back to the same point and he's saying look lifestyle matters lifestyle matters living sinless matters because we are claiming that we are born of god so we have everything that helps us to live a sinless life how can we continue to live in sin and how can we continue to hate our brother okay and again he brings in that theme of loving the brother he is saying uh, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of god earlier he said you are of the devil now he is saying you are not of god and he's also saying anyone who does not love his brother you're not of god okay very strong very very strong uh and he brings the example of cain here okay, cain is an example of somebody who uh how do i put it like he was jealous of the fact that god accepted abel's sacrifice or abel's offering but what did jealousy lead to so we have to be very uh, cautious of this and that maybe that is why apostle john is going on and on about loving your brother you know what happened to cain initially it could have been jealousy it could have been bitterness but ultimately what happened it led to murder 
Right? So when we carry unforgiveness, bitterness in our hearts towards somebody, we think that's it. Like, okay, I don't like them. That's it. I don't want to resolve it. God is asking me to forgive them. I don't want to deal with it. But you know, you can't leave it unchecked because it's like a seed. When you plant the seed, what happens? It grows, right? And in our hearts, when we have thoughts of unforgiveness, we are feeding it. We are thinking, oh, look at him. How could he? How could God bless him? So many things, right? So you're actually nurturing. You're letting it stay and have root in our. We are letting it stay and have root in our hearts. Sooner or later, right? It will grow. It will grow. And unfortunately, the tree that grew from Cain's jealousy. What was that tree? Murder. Very scary. Very, very scary, right? So John is bringing in that example and he's saying, look, don't give space for any form of unforgiveness, bitterness, because look at the example of Cain. He started with that unforgiveness, but ultimately he ended up killing his brother. So he said, you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. So jealousy, it started from jealousy, right? And one more thing you notice here. Remember in uh, chapter one, he said, confess. If there is sin in your heart, if there's sin in your life, just confess it and you don't deal with it. But in the case of Cain, his brother's offering was righteous and his offering was not righteous. But he did not even have the humility to acknowledge. Now, suppose Cain went to acknowledge and say, okay, God, you accepted his because it was right. Whatever is wrong in my offering, you help me. Right? Understand it. I repent of it. I make a restitution for it. Uh, and I will also offer you a good uh, sacrifice. Would his story have been different? Probably. But the issue is, Unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, uh, hatred, okay, jealousy, envy, pride, not ready to change. Why should I change? Right? God accepted his, you know, something is wrong with him. Something is wrong with the way God judged. Right? Why should I change? So then pride, right? So you're just looking at a combination, it's a toxic combination in our hearts. Ultimately, what happened? He thought nothing will happen. But all these wrong attitudes, right? And not uh, aligning ourselves to the righteous ways of God and walking in love towards our brothers and sisters. The seed grows roots, becomes a plant. Unfortunately, in the case of cake, one day it grew into a huge tree. And what happened? Murder. He was so angry his brother and the fact that God accepted his righteous offering and his own offering was not counted righteous he just killed his brother right so it's very very dangerous and John is reminding the believers of this example and he's saying don't marvel brethren if the world hates you now, again you know, he's meandering he's going from one thing to the other be righteous be pure love your brother uh, okay, and, and uh, be of God. Oh, again, meandering. He's moving on to the theme here. And he says, remember he said, don't love the world. And now he's saying, if the world doesn't love you, don't be you know, so amazed by it. Obviously, even Jesus, the world did not love him. The world did not understand the purpose with which he came. Right? Because he was of the Father. He says, when we live here on the earth, we have to live with that mindset that, okay, I'm committed to the eternal purposes of God. Okay. So have the eternal perspective. Again, this is something he has touched earlier. He is touching on the same subject of having that eternal perspective. He's reminding the believer, we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brethren abides in death. Okay. So he is uh, saying, that we must love our brothers, we must remember that we are living on the earth for eternal purposes. And again, you know, tying that same thought of loving your brother uh, once again, he says, if we love our brother, 
Then remember we said the life of God flows through the fellowship of God. Now he is strongly saying, if you don't love your brother, then what do you have? He is saying you have death. So God's life is not flowing through you. Okay. So obviously it's serious to not uh, love our brothers and sisters and that is why he is warning the believer. And he comes up on, comes on very strongly and the next statement here he says, if whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So, uh, you know, he really wants the believers to walk in the, this kind of love. Now, does this kind of love mean that we never, um, you know, uh, point out what is wrong in, in our brothers and sisters? No, no. Uh, we do speak the truth in love. Uh, but the point is to have that heart of love, like the underlying motive and the intention. You know, intention is everything. Your heart is right towards people. Okay? Uh, and that is the love. And that love will cause you to, to nurture them, bless them, encourage them, and so many other things come out of it. But the intention or the motivation is right. Okay? Now, moving on, he's talking a little bit about uh, that love and how that love presents itself. This is like the description of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You know, the, the agape love of God or the unconditional love of God. What kind of love is it? You know, it's a love that lays down its own life. It's a sacrificial love, isn't it? Love is patient, love is kind. It does not boast, it does not envy, it's not uh, proud, it's not, uh, you know, different things that are mentioned in, in that passage. So he is describing that same love here, uh, but towards our brothers and sisters. And he says, we know that, we, we this we know, love, because he laid down his life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. See, again, the point, uh, the way he is making the point is, whatever he did, let's do it. Right? He was righteous, you be righteous. He was pure, you be pure. He was holy, you be holy. The way he walked, you walk. Now we say, he laid down his life for us. See, God does not ask us to do anything which he has not already done. Right? So he has been sacrificial in the way he has loved us. Now when he can be sacrificial, He's calling us to walk in that same kind of agape love. You know, a sacrificial love is always, um, it's, it's a love which says, you may not pay me back for the way I am loving you, but that's okay. It's a sacrifice. If I lose something, it's fine. You know, I will still show that unconditional love towards you. And that's uh, uh, the love of God towards us. That's the love, kind of love that we find parents showering upon their children. You know? uh, in uh, uh, a marriage, people are called to have that kind of a love. And similarly, in the body of Christ, to have that intention, right intention, uh, even sacrificial love many times uh, for the growth of our brothers and sisters. But he says, when we... Uh, are of the world, we will not have this kind of love. Now, if we have this God's kind of love, agape love for our brothers and sisters, how would it show? In practice, he's going to talk about a few things. He's saying, look, if you find that your brother is in need and you don't do anything about it, how can you say that you love your brother? Right? So, he's talking about being practical. John is very practical here. He's saying how, how about you extend a helping hand when somebody is in need? And he says, don't love only in word, but please love in deed and in truth. So our actions towards our fellow believers, it, they matter. Okay, what do we do when we hear that somebody is sick? I mean, I'm talking about myself also. Many times I've heard and I've prayed personally and left it, right? But it's only now that I'm also learning, oh, okay, I should call them up. Or, you know, maybe, what can I do practically? I'm not saying like, uh, promise something that you cannot deliver. No, maybe you can't go visit them or you can't uh, give them a big sum of money knowing that they're in the hospital. But what is it that you can do 
what is it that you can express uh, as love towards them in a practical way be willing to do that it could just be one phone call to say hey how are you doing you know i'm praying for you uh, can i pray with you now but practically you see a brother in need when i hear somebody is in need right uh, can we respond in a practical way and i'll just share a small testimony about that soon okay so that's what he's encouraging the believer he say don't love only in word you know you could go preach about it but practically what is it that you can actually do so in deed and in truth you do it to show the love that you have for your brother okay and uh, when we do this uh, you know he says our hearts condemn us god is greater than our heart and knows all things beloved if our heart does not condemn us we have confidence towards god so basically he say maintain a good conscience you know even within ourselves paul writes a lot about this and he says i try to maintain a good conscience so that uh, you know nothing within me pricks whatever if, if there's anything that's pricking i work it out with god you know i i overcome that issue in my life now after having done that even if something is bothering me then god is greater than that but you know you do your part to be uh, as clean as possible in your conscience when we do that he talks about effective prayer you know, when we have a clean conscience i've done my part i've done my most my maximum then he says look when you pray with a conscience like that he says whatever we ask we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight so we will have an effective prayer life when we are living the life when we are loving our brothers and sisters we are keeping the commandment of god and the last verse here he says and this is uh oh, last couple of verses and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son jesus christ and love one another as he gave us commandment now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him and by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us so he says look uh, when we walk in righteousness we do what god has called us to do uh, not only are we living in him but also know that god is living in us right how does he live in us he lives in us through the holy spirit okay and this is how we live out that christian life which is um, a spiritually done deed in christ jesus but at the same time by way of our uh, acknowledging this and practicing it right we are uh, able to walk the way jesus walked so it's both spiritual reality and natural it becomes natural reality because you are living it up so be practical and when it comes to helping our brothers and sisters you know, once again we can be very very practical so i just want to share a testimony uh, i think this happened uh, 2005 when uh, my father was admitted uh, in st john's hospital uh, he had had an open heart surgery and uh, you know Uh, post surgery there were a lot of complications so he was hospitalized for months uh, back then and uh, i live uh, far away from st johns so you know i was attending a particular church uh, where i live but because my father was hospitalized i was living in the hospital with my dad for uh, you know a couple of months there uh, and at that point somebody told me hey why don't you attend a church close by i didn't know any churches in that area and uh, someone told me about apc so i happened to go no once because every sunday i was missing church i just went to a church which was close by and uh, i remember that day uh, the pastor was preaching on lake the axe to the root of pride i can't forget that's the first sermon uh, i heard in, in that uh, auditorium by pastor and at the end of it there was the altar call and he said if there is a need please come forward we will pray for you uh, and i went to the altar and uh, they prayed over people and pastor came up to me he asked me what is the problem and i said look my father is in the hospital uh, and uh, he's having this post surgery complications so it's been a long time uh, but this you know things are just the same and we are struggling 
So he prayed over me. He prayed over me. He prayed for healing for my dad. And I'm talking about I think 2005, if I'm not wrong. And uh, that's it. So I was very blessed by the service I went back. And you will not believe it. I think the very next day there were two uh, brothers who came to the hospital room. Uh, and uh, just to spend time with us, encourage us, and pray for us. I was surprised. I was like, okay, who are you? Where are you coming from? And they said, All People's Church. Uh, Pastor Ashish has sent uh, us to pray for you and your father. And I was so touched by that because uh, I was like, wow, I just, yeah, I just mentioned that I'm coming from St. John's Hospital uh, and my father's not well. And uh, you know, pastor prayed and that's enough, right? He prayed and that's sufficient. But till today, I cannot forget that additional step that he sent to people. They came, they prayed. You know, I think I was there, my mother, sister, they spent time with us. They prayed for us. Uh, and so like a follow-up, right? Uh, and it's such a blessing when I think of practical ways. I mean, till today, I notice that right in, in the ministry and how uh, sometimes uh, I mean I'm not to exalt a man or anything but I'm just learning from from good example uh, when you hear that someone's not well or someone's in need extending a hand in a practical way shows the love of God of course we love them but I hope the point that you are getting um, you know uh, that we can do something, right, to to be there for them. If somebody has told you that they've been struggling with something, maybe you call them up after praying, after a week, another week, and say, how are you doing now? How are you doing now? It is a blessing for them. Somebody says, hey, I can't pay my fees. If that's a small help you can do. And don't be pressured to do anything. Be led by the Holy Spirit. But the point I'm making is show love in a practical way. Okay, so any thoughts you want to add to it uh, before we close today? I think that will be nice. Okay, have you ever had an experience where someone has extended kindness to you? Okay. Kanan, are you able to share briefly? Yeah, yes, I can. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, a few months back, I had an issue with my stomach. It need a uh, surgery. So, I just uh, said to my uncle, I mean, uh, uh, I was in the orphanage, so I called him uncle. I said to him to pray, just pray, I said. He prayed and all, and, uh, and the next uh, Sunday, uh, the person I know from abroad, uh, he suddenly texted me, and he said, I heard that you had some issues, and uh, you, you, need, you need to do this uh, surgery. Uh, I said, yeah, yes. Then he said, suddenly he said, he prayed and he said, I sent you the money, you can do that. And in that time, I didn't have anything in my uh, account. Uh, exactly zero balance. This is what happened. Amazing. Thanks, Kanan. Thank you for sharing. You know, such a blessing, right? When somebody listens to the problem and they respond. Show the love of God. Yeah, I didn't I share him. Uh, of <laughs> shared with him. Okay, okay. I okay. shared with someone, but it some, uh, somehow went to him and uh, he helped me. Okay, okay, okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so that's what we're talking about today. Uh, extending the love of God, showing it uh, in a real way to our brothers and sisters. So just think about this, and I think we will come back next class and we have a 
recap once again have a discussion and continue with chapter 4 um so we will wind up uh, with a word of prayer i just want to request anyone kiran can you pray to close yes ma'am sure uh, yeah thank you father god we just come before your throne father god father god we just bless each and every one father god through your wisdom your knowledge and your your uh, your testimony father god just bless to every side father god thanking you father god for this class and that network is also father god thanking you thanking you father you you, you are working your holy spirit uh, is still is working within us father god and help us to uh, walk righteousness father god thanking you father god for your vision and you chose us father god to the kingdom work father god father god thanking you for every the the words father god uh, uh, what we are learning the this semester father god every subject is new and and so excited and every blessed subject we have father god thanking you for leading us father god thank you father god we need more blessing and we need more uh, wisdom and knowledge that we can understand all subject father god thank you thank you father god thank you for nancy ma'am thank you for all we all students father god thank you father god thank you almighty jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you kiran for praying and thank you everyone for being here for this feel free you can log off i know you have another class to catch uh, i will stop the recording thank you Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.